Right. Hello, everyone. Um, as you're well aware, there's been some developments with regards to getting the Gemini flying a little better than it has been. So originally we were going to release the MTM update, which is myself, Tyler and Magnus. We've been doing some heavy development on the PIDs, trying to reduce the yaw outs. Now, with some of that testing, we've actually ended up going across the clean flight. So for this to happen, we contacted someone called Sammy who we must thank, who wrote the initial code to get it going. And basically, let's say done a loose port um, for the uh, processor on the, the Calibre. So everything here is unofficial. We can't obviously vouch for its stability, but we've been flying it all along, and we are more than happy with its results. So without further ado, I'd just like to say thank you to both Tyler and Magnus, and also Sammy for all the work they've put in. We've all had our disagreements, particularly between me Magnus and Tyler when we've been testing, but I think we're we're there or thereabouts now. So yeah, as I say, do this at your own risk. Firstly, you know, make sure you remove your props if you do this, because we don't want any cut fingers. So without further ado, let's get to it. Within this video description, you will see a number of notes. Uh, these are actually written by Magnus, and the video is recorded by Matt. So there are a number of links in there. One to Dropbox, uh, which is Magnus's Dropbox, and he will contain the clean flight files which you must use but first the first thing we need to do is actually set up the Calibre to accept the clean flight file so what you want to do is open up your Tau Labs so what I'm going to do is I will open up Tau Labs as you can see it will start you want to plug in your Calibre you can leave it in your frame if you wish. Just remember, just unplug your props because we don't want any cut fingers. Once this is recognised, I will probably get an error, but we'll wait. You can see it's working away. I've got this error. Ignore that. You want to click on firmware. Now, what we're going to do here is click halt. So, what we want to do is click halt. Okay. So, effectively, we stop the Calibre now. And it's going to say detecting bootloader. Okay, we're now in line with the Calibre connected and we're ready to do the clean flight part. As I said, you need to navigate from the description to this folder here, which is Magnus's Dropbox. Download all of these files. The first file is actually the clean flight configurator. This is version 1.9, but a developer version. The next file is the bin file. Now, this is what we're going to flash the clean flight. Uh, file onto the Calibre with and then the last thing is a CLI dump now this is the latest and greatest PIDs etc that we're using to get the Gemini going so without further ado I'll show you how to do it so as I said I've already downloaded this just to speed up so what I'm going to do is click on open file I'm going to navigate to where my clean flight I was kept, which is this file here, CleanFi F4 Calibre filters. So what we do is we double click on it. You'll see an error pass in that. Ignore that, just click flash. So what you do, it's going to erase the firmware. So it's erasing Tau Labs because we don't want that. And it's going to upload the new firmware. So we'll just wait for that to be done. Give it a bit of time. Okay, you see it's firmware upload success. Now it's important you do not do anything at this point. All you want to do is just unplug the USB. Don't even click boot, safe boot, open file, flash, do not do anything, nor connect. Just unplug. So I've now unplugged my Gemini. Next step. As per the instructions, is you want to navigate to this site here. And what this will do is if you're running XP, it allows you to open up your ports, uh, your USB ports to enable developer mode, etc. And you need to do this, it's important. So what you what you need to do once you've downloaded this, again I've already done it, click download, and then you need to navigate to the folder where it's installed. 
Now, depending if you're running a 32-bit system or a 64-bit, you need to find which one you have and you need to just open it up basically to allow it to do its install. Once you've done that, we're then ready to move on to the Chrome section. So let's go on to that. As I said, by this point, you should have already had these files downloaded from the Dropbox because you will now need them, particularly this one here, the Clean Flight Configurator Developer. So what we do is we click on Extensions. And then what we want to do, this is found within Settings, File Settings, Extensions on the side. What you want to do is click Developer Mode. It's at the top. We want to do un load unpacked extension. So now what you need to do is basically navigate to where you've held your clean flight file or your developer file. So just go into mine. Where is it? And all you do is click on clean flight developer configurator developer. Okay, and then click OK. Now you see it's unpacked it. And here we go. So it's already enabled. Basically, all we need to do now is load clean flight. So for me, I'm just going to search for it here. You see it's come up. Clean flight configurator. It's great. See, it's worked. See, we're on version, it should be work, version 1.9 when it all loads up. But what we need to do now is effectively connect your Calibre. But the first thing you need to do is actually make sure it's on a level surface. Now remember, you cannot do any six point calibration, anything like that when you're using clean flight, because as we said, this is not an official release. So what we need to do is plug in your Gemini. You may hear my one start up because I'm on a laptop. I have to put a battery in because I can't, cannot get enough voltage out to power the Calibre in this. So I'm now gonna plug in Calibre. I'm going to load it up on Windows 7 and hopefully all being well it will pop up. Okay you now see that it's been recognized. I had a little bit of a technical issue there. I have to make sure my battery is plugged in. And all I'm going to do is click connect. So now we see we've effectively got the Gemini plugged in. What we need to first do is click Calibrate Accelerometer. Now it's important that you make sure this is on a level surface, okay? So what we're gonna do is click Acce Calibrate Accelerometer. So you see it's now started and it's finished. Now, next thing we need to do is go to the CLI tab. This is important. Earlier on you downloaded a text file called How to Migrate to Clean Flight. What you wanna do is open this up and you want to copy all of this good stuff here. Because without this, you're going to go nowhere. All right. So you see it's already got save at the bottom. This is important for clean flight because we need it to save. So what we do is we copy this. Click in here. So where it says right command here. Paste. I've just done control V. Enter. And now you see that everything's been loaded up. And it's now beeped, so it's rebooting. Now sometimes you may actually have to disconnect and reconnect. The reason for this is that, particularly on my one, for some reason the reboot function doesn't seem to work. So you see down here it's rebooting, it'll just keep saying that. So all I do is just click disconnect, I'll unplug the USB, and then I'll plug back in, and all being well, it pops up. You see it's just popped up. Click connect, and you now see we have a hex. Okay, so all we need to do now is just double check that the settings have been carried across. So, for example, on the receiver, what we need to do at this point is actually turn on your, your transmitter. Now, in this example, I'm using a Tyrannis. One thing that's important on this is we need to make sure that we have we go from a thousand. 1500 to 2000 or there or thereabouts so straight away that's my throttle you notice that it's actually roll 
So the channel mapping is wrong. Now this is going to be different for most people, but I'm on a Tyrannus, so what I need to do is actually change the channel map over here. So I'm going to change it to T-A-E-R, which is Throttle A1 Elevator Rudder. Now hopefully this will work. What I need to do is click Save, it'll pause, and then it should start up again. So my throttle, that's my throttle, throttling up, down, that's my pitch, up, oh sorry, pitch forwards, pitch down, roll right, roll left, your right, your left. Now you hear that my motor's actually started up. Basically that's uh, uh, the default for clean flight is your your bottom right so throttle down so next up what we need to do is actually just check the receiver settings so, I'm just, so my minimum throttle is 991 what we need to do is go to the configuration tab and actually write this in you see here minimum throttle 991 Okay, so what we're going to do is type that in and click save and reboot. You see it's EEPROM saved and I will probably have to disconnect and reconnect because this seems a bit funny with the Mac. So I just let it sit for a little while and then I'll disconnect. Basically I just disconnected and reconnected, that's the reason for the pause, just didn't want to make everyone sit there and watch it. So now that we've altered the minimum value, the motors won't spin up, which is what we want when we are armed, we don't want them to spin up, or some of you might like it, but for safety, we've now altered that and it's correct. Okay, so what we need to do now is just check that we've got RX PPM, because I'm using a Tyrannus, so I want to do that, and I'm using a D4R. I, I. The fail safe is chipped. Now that's important. Make sure you set your fail safe on your Tyrannus or whatever transmitter you're using with your receiver. But also make sure you enable it here. You also want to double check that you've got this Spectrum 1024. I'm not sure why we need this, but let's just leave it like that because that, it works. If you're interested in recording black box, then you can leave that checked. What it will allow you to do is just log your flights and do the overlay. Okay, so basically everything we've done there means that you're all set to go with clean flight. Now you've got your PID tune in. These are the optimal settings right now. We're using multi V rewrite. You can up your pitch, roll rates, etc. If you wish, you can change your TPA to here. You can also increase your RC rate, so how snappy you want it in terms of actually flipping and rolling. And we're running the Expo in Clean Flight itself. We're not running it on the transmitters. That's just something that we've been doing from day one. We used to run on Tau Labs it within the, the transmitter, but we prefer to use Clean Flights for that. So yeah, that's everything. You can obviously assign your switches. So you can have an arm switch, you could have a horizon angle. At the moment, this development here is only for rate mode or okay so you cannot if you want to try horizon you can try it at your own risk again angle is the same try it at your own risk we have only been doing this with rate mode there's a reason for that is that we wanted to get this pushed out soon there will be a release of the Tau labs files i am sure very shortly but i believe trappy has been waiting for Tau labs to do an official release so we've gone ahead ourselves without Trappy to release Clean Flight as we think it's the better option right now. So yeah, I hope that's helped everyone. Um, and once again, I just want to say thank you to Tyler, Magnus, and also Sammy for doing the hard work behind, you know, porting the F4 processor effectively. He's pretty quiet and elusive, but when he does, he's got some good stuff. So yeah, Magnus is the brains behind the PIDs. Tyler does some pretty aggressive flying, which you've all seen from the videos, uh, whereas I just spend a lot of time crashing and ruining batteries, basically. So yeah, once again, thank you very much, and enjoy. That's it.